Hi, I'm Julie Williamson. I teach in the Transition Studies program here at SPSCC, and I studied Applied Linguistics, which is just simply the study of language and how it is used. Language variety is an important part of our diversity. Language diversity includes all languages, and we have many fabulously multilingual people on campus. But in this video, we're going to focus on the varieties of English and get a peek of a few on our campus. Varieties of English can show up in our pronunciation, our word choice, our slang, our grammar, and our levels of formality, and in other places. We also have world English speakers at SPSCC, people who came from countries outside the US and speak international varieties, or English as a second, third, fourth, or fifth language. For all of us, our language variety depends on where we grew up, our age, our families and heritage, where we went to school, and other factors. It is deeply tied to our identities. These varieties are also called dialects when they are closely tied to regions or social groups. Let's take a listen. My name is James Schneider, and I'm a professor here at South Puget Sound. Um, I grew up in East Tennessee and Georgia, and English was my first language and is still my only language. My name is David McAvoy, and I'm an associate in, uh, faculty here at SPSCC, and I grew up in northern Maine. Hi, I'm Anna Mary Fitzgerald. I grew up in this area, but I've also lived in California, Minnesota, New York, Kentucky, and Nevada. <laughs> I've also lived in Mexico and Germany and speak the languages from those countries. So my name is Barak in India, Parak in uh, Olympia, Park in Washington, D.C., Paraka in uh, some other part of the U.S. And uh, I grew up in India and my mother's a uh, professor of English literature, so I was introduced to the language very early on. So in that sense, I'm quite unique. And I've lived in uh, the US in uh, Florida, Virginia, Massachusetts, Washington, DC, and then moved to, to the West Coast. So as I moved in different places, I've adapted my accent and picked up different words and hence it adapts to the audience that I'm with. So if I'm uh, here, then over time, I'll speak in ways that I can be understood. My name is Chandra Miller-Starks, and I teach psychology here at SPSCC. And I grew up in the South in Arkansas, and um, I'm actually a hillbilly, is what we literally grew up in the hills. And so that's where my language comes from. Hi, I'm Ima Gerard Dolmans. Most people know me as Jared, and I'm an instructor in the humanities here at the college. Um, I'm Dutch, and bilingual. I've been speaking English and Dutch pretty much since birth, and I grew up in Liberia, Kenya, and the Netherlands before moving to the U.S. Hi, my name is Aki Suzuki, and I am a language faculty here at SPSCC, and I teach Japanese. I grew up in Tokyo, Japan, and I primarily speak Japanese grow, growing up. And I, but in Japan, we start learning English um, since middle school, high school, and then universities. And I also come here 25 years ago um, to learn English at SPCC. Hi, my name is David Hyde. I grew up in Oklahoma. Um, I teach sociology here at SPSCC. And um, I don't really speak any other languages, but I you know, grew up learning to speak in Oklahoma. And then my accent probably got pretty strongly affected when I was in high school, joined the debate team, and that um, took away some of my Oklahoma accent. Did you know that everyone has an accent? Your accent is your pronunciation or how you say a word. For example, do you say aunt or aunt to refer to your mother or father's sister? Aunt. 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 So I've changed the way I say, th say these words depending on where I am. 
So if I'm in India, I'll say aunt. If I'm in Olympia, I'll say aunt. And if I'm in New York, I might shift it a little more. Uh, in Botswana, it would also shift. So typically, I think my accent will shift depending on the place I'm at so I can be understood better. Aunt? Aunt. 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 Caramel? Um, caramel. Caramel. So this would be caramel if I was in Olympia and caramel if it might be in India. Um, caramel. Caramel? Caramel. Caramel. Pecan. Pecan. Pecan, if it's just the nut. Pecan pie, if it's in a pie. Pecan. Pecan. So pecan pie would be in India and pecans probably would be in the U.S. Pecan. 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 Pajamas. Pajamas. PJs. Pajama. Pajama would be in India and pajamas would be here in the U.S. Pajamas. Pajamas? PJs or pajamas. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise would be if I were in Olympia and uh, mayonnaise would be if I'm in India. Mayonnaise. 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 I have a Northwest accent. No. I not only think I know because people point it out all the time. I think I definitely do have an accent in English, although it's got a lot less over the years. But I get asked sometimes where I'm from. I have various accents in English and they change depending on how much time I spend in some place. So usually if I'm in India for a couple of months, my accent will become more tuned to that place. When I go to Botswana, I begin to say the words in a way that are said there. And so those English words take on a certain Swana accent. And then when I return back to the US over time, I begin to see that the words I speak are spoken in a way that people can understand and uh, that accent is uh, not something that they're not, it's, you know, it may be different, but at least they are able to make, be coherent. And as faculty, that's really important that students are able to uh, comprehend what I'm saying, despite having a, a different accent. Oh, I have an accent for sure. It's less, you know, than it used to be from living in the Pacific Northwest. But anytime I get near my family or get tired, it really comes out. Yes, I have accent in English. I don't always think I have one, but then other people tell me I do. So it comes out at particular words in particular times. The many word with V and L and R are very difficult for me. So something like volunteer, um, um, vocabulary, <laughs> and scroll, that, that little animal on a tree, I cannot say those words. Uh, <laughs> well, people who know me say that the words water, quarter, and process are pretty distinct. Um, I'm sure there are others too, but I can't think of them right now. I, I don't know that there are words other than herkin, which means very big. Um, I think that it's more the way that I don't pronounce letters, like the town of Shelton, I would say Shelton. Yes, words like park and car and Harvard Yard, that's a typical New England thing, but um, also we add ours where there aren't any, like the word idea, so you know, just things like that. So yeah, I do have some words that really pick up on my accent. One that always comes to mind is tur, T-O-U-R, and I say it tur, and other people say it 
tour, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, different words. Uh, there are times when um, the one that really comes to mind is water. So in, in the U.S., we do we can range from water to as we as I fly, I fly over Europe and it becomes water. Or uh, if you're in uh, Sweden and all, there's a slightly more uh, European accent, water. And then as I go over uh, and cross over into Asia, then it becomes water, vata. Do you want vata in the water? So it's sort of that word is, uh, and I think words which have two A's, uh, a lot of sort of um, accents with A, E, I, that's where we will find differences because the words uh, are, especially the word A, so aunt, ant, can't, can't, are very common for people who have grown up in India as they speak American English. They begin to extend their A's, but they might speak their other words from an Indian accent. I'm told that I don't say the word P-I-N correctly. I say, I think I say pin, maybe it's P-E-N. One of those words I'm told I don't say right. <laughs> I say pin for both. There are some words that really make my accent come through. Um, I have a hard time differentiating between E's and I's sometimes. So pen and pen or when and when. I kind of say them the same even though they uh, are different words. I also tend to drop um, the A out of days of the week. So what are you going to do next Sunday? You know, uh, what were you doing last Tuesday? That kind of thing. A uh, number of words that we use in India like time pass. It's sort of just procrastination. It's not used here. Trepone is a common word in India that we don't use here. Um, and then there are other Hindi words which could be translated into meaning something in English. Yes, the um, word in Japan we use English, Japanese it's called, but um, it's not really true, I believe. So like hotchkiss for the stapler and baby car, the baby car, like stroller for the babies, that kind of words. Uh, no, I'm not aware of it because most everybody here sounds like I do. So there's words that I brought with me from Oklahoma to Olympia that at first weren't very popular here that have become more popular, um, folks and y'all. So um, people even kind of made fun of me, I think, for saying folks. When I first moved here, I remember some students commenting on it. I even have a letter from a student who, who commented on it at the time. Um, but now it's become, they both become kind of popular, um, you know, gender neutral terms instead of saying you guys or hey guys or something like that. People will say folks or they'll say y'all. And it's great because those are terms that come really naturally and easily to me. So it's actually kind of neat seeing uh, what I would call Oklahoma vocabulary um, spreading to the rest of the country. Y'all. <laughs> For sure. Nothing comes to mind. I'm sorry. Oh, absolutely. So in the South, you have a lot of sayings, too, that go along. But um, also, I say fixin'. Uh, you're fixin' to do something. So that is a, a Southern term that's used. I do use ain't, even though it's not proper language. It It is a word that we specifically use when we're trying to send certain messages. Like, that ain't right. Or something like that, yeah. I, well, I'll, I'll use the word footsack, which means let's go. And I don't really ever hear that one except in a pretty small circle of, of folks, I guess, yeah. Almost certainly. Uh, it's, it's less strong than it once was. It probably comes out more if I'm around people from Oklahoma. Like when I visit my mom, my accent definitely comes out more. She's got a very strong accent. She tells me I live in Washington. And um, so it's become more neutral over time for me and probably for most people. Um, everybody sees media that comes from Southern California. And so everybody has slowly adopted a Southern California kind of accent and dialect. Mm. <laughs> I don't think it's changed, but my speaking English got better, I believe. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. But maybe? <laughs> probably. Um, I don't remember having an accent growing up in East Tennessee, but probably if I heard myself back then, 
I would hear an accent because I hear one in, in my parents now that I don't remember hearing growing up. I think it has. I think it's, you know, lessened a little bit. Um, but whenever I go back to Maine every year and, you know, Carla, my wife has pointed out that as soon as I'm back in Maine, the old accent reasserts itself, especially if I'm around my family and my brothers, especially. Part of it is we play around with it. And but then we just end up being it. So, but I think it has over the years that, I, that it has changed a little bit. I think my accent evolves based on where I am. And uh, over time, if I'm in a certain place, there's a layering of the way those words are spoken. And depending on if I travel overseas and I spend extended periods of time in India, I tend to regain and that accent becomes more prominent, even though there they would say I have an American accent. And uh, when I go to Botswana there too, then there's another layering. There they say I have an Indian accent with a sort of American angle, which they're not sure where it's from. And so it's really a global accent. Yes, for sure. When I moved to the Pacific Northwest, um, I experienced some kind of discrimination really based on my accent, assumptions that they had because I was from the South. So I started to uh, kind of change my accent so that it just wouldn't stand out so much. Um, but I'm very proud of my accent and it feels like home to me. So anytime I hear it, you know, it, it's, it's part of my heart, you know, to hear it's the best sound in the world to me. Yeah, I think it's changed drastically. Um, I've been here 30 some odd years. Uh, when I first moved to the U.S., I sounded very English boarding school, um, very proper potato in the front of my mouth. Um, and over the years, I think it's diminished a lot to the point that when I go home, I get accused of sounding like a yank. Another part of language variation is our vocabulary or word choice. Coke. Where I grew up, we called all of those different uh, drinks Coke. You'd say, I'd like a Coke. And the server would say, what Coke would you like? And we'd say, root beer. Soda. Well, if I were in India, it would be just called Coke. Here we might go soda, soda pop, a can. Uh, soda pop? Coke. Coke. They're all Cokes. <laughs> Soda. Soda. Hotaru. Firefly. Uh, lightning bug. It's a firefly. Lightning bug? Lightning bug. Yeah, firefly. Lightning bugs. Tennis shoes. Sneakers. Tennis shoes or sneakers. Sneakers or shoes? Tennis shoes. Uh, tennis shoes. Shoes. Sneaker. <laughs> Sneakers. Water fountain. Drinking fountain. Water fountain. Water fountain. Drinking fountain. Water fountain. Water, uh, oh, oh, well, it's a water fountain. Oh, water fountain. Trash can. Trash can. Garbage can. A garbage can or a trash can? Probably more in the garbage can. Um, but there are times that maybe I've used trash as well. Trash can? Garbage can or trash can? Garbage can. Trash can? In India, I would just call a circle, a traffic circle. Roundabout. Traffic circle? Roundabout. Traffic circle? Roundabout? Roundabout. Oh, it's a roundabout. Bathroom. Restroom if I'm in the United States, toilet if I'm in India. Lavatory. Bathroom. 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 
A bathroom. A restroom or a bathroom. As you can see, we have a great deal of fantastic English variation at SPSCC. There are many varieties missing, of course, but this is a small sampling that shows how different our accents and dialects can be in English. However, language, like any aspect of our diversity, is not socially neutral. The way we speak and write can be stigmatized. A stigma is a set of negative or unfair beliefs. So our ideas about language can reinforce social inequality if we hold on to simplistic ideas of good English or bad English. Just like any other areas of our identity, the language we use, the language we learned at home can give us advantages. It can make us feel like we belong or it can make us feel that we are outsiders. This is especially true in college where the academic or technical English can feel like a foreign language. No, not really, I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's a well-recognized accent in this country. So uh, the farther away you are, people think you're from the East Coast. And then the closer you get, oh, you're from New York. And then when you get on the East Coast, people say, oh, you're from Boston. Very rarely do I identify it as a Northern Maine accent, but I mean, New England in general. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting that sometimes racist, when they hear my accent, they make an assumption that I'm a racist and will start talking racist stuff. And in my family, where I was raised in the South, we were not raised to be racist at all. Certainly, you know, we had some stuff, but we um, it wasn't something that we tried to perpetuate white supremacy in any way. And then also, I had a lot of people make jokes about incest based on my accent, which re was really hurtful because it was continuous and um, so that was hard. And then if I say ain't, people make a judgment that I'm stupid and or they hear my accent and they assume that I'm stupid. And it has nothing to do with my intelligence level. It's the way we communicate and the words that we, we use in our culture. I don't think the accent has been stigmatized. I think actually I've probably had the opposite experience when I first moved to the U.S. People assumed perhaps because of the accent that I was more interesting or intelligent than I am. Um, I remember a teacher at Western, a professor at Western, who always wanted me to read things out loud because I, and I quote, you have such a lovely accent. And I really hated that. The accents are often stereotyped in uh, our TV shows. So the one that we all remember is Apu. Um, there's also in uh, other instances. So there's a certain stereotyped Indian accent with the media or in TV shows we see, which is uh, more stigmatized, but other than that, for the most part, I've not experienced uh, any stigma based on the accent, per se. Uh, my accent here does not make me feel like an outsider, but when I've lived in other places, it was clear that I was not from there. Having accent, yes. Um, I have, I'm very lucky that Olympia people accept me who I am, how I talk. And I never feel like I'm outsider or somebody um, discrimi discriminate me from it. And because um, accent bring the um, uniqueness from us. And like, uh, like I said, um, if you play musical instrument and every musical instrument has different tones and sound and personality so that individually it's great and good enough, but if you, all the musical, inst different all musical instrument get together, it makes great harmony and then bring layer of the um, per, um bring a better layer of um, sounds. And that's, I think, accents you take as is, who you are, where are you from, and then just be yourself to be unique and different and then understand each other from those kind of harmony. I don't know if it makes me feel like an outsider, but um, but yeah, to some extent, if people hear you say um, things with a really, like a really thick oaky accent, you know, people might think that um, it sounds kind of, kind of rural or kind of uneducated or kind of hick or something like that. I don't think I felt like an outsider because of my accent. Um, and like I said before, I don't really think I have an accent. 
But that said, I know that the accent from the southern United States is stigmatized. Thanks for listening. My hope is that we can see that we all have accents and dialects which reflect our lived experiences and identities. Effective communication is a two-way street. The more accents we understand, the better our communication skills become.